clear day when the sky is blue and there's just enough breeze to blow the clouds away, you can stand on the big hill above the valley and watch Duck and Oliver far below, busily at work on Duck's branch line near the sea. The two engines are very proud of their matching coats of gleaming color. Oliver often talks about the time that Douglas saved him from scrap. If it wasn't for his help, Oliver will say, I might have been caught when I ran away from the scrapyard, and I would never have come to live here on Sir Topham Hatch Railway. The other engines all wanted to know about Oliver's adventures. Amazing, remarked Henry. Oliver, said James, has resource. And sagacity, put in Gordon. What does that mean, whispered Percy. I think, replied Thomas, it's about being clever and wise. He is, finished Gordon, an example to us all. I'm sorry to say that Oliver became very puffed up in the smoke box. Henry says I'm amazing. He's right. He whistled as he swooshed along the line. One day, Sir Topham Hatt came to see him. You are doing well. Now you must learn how to look after freight cars. Every wise engine knows that you cannot trust freight cars. The other engines warned Oliver, but he took no notice. You think I can't manage, he said, huffily. Gordon knows better. He says I'm sagacious. You may be good gracious, or whatever you call it, but cars can be troublesome, and... Say no more, Duck, interrupted Donald. It's a pity, but the wee engine will just have to learn for himself. Oliver pulled some loaded cars to a siding and pushed the empties to the chute. Then he came back to take the loaded cars away. But they were comfortable and didn't want to move. What right is he to poke his funnel in here? We want Duck or Donald. Or Douglas! Look sharp, puffed Oliver. That's not the way to speak, hissed the cars. We'll get even. Oliver heard nothing. The cars moved smoothly at first. Then suddenly, Oliver felt them push forward. His driver applied the brakes, but they were useless against the surging cars. On, 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 yelled the cars. Oliver fought hard, but still they forced him on and on. At last, the cars grew tired. I'm winning, gasped Oliver, but it was too late. Oliver lay bruised and bemused, bunker down in the turntable well. Duck surveyed the damage. Hello, Oliver. Are you being a good, gracious engine? Beg pardon, but we really don't like this sort of surprise. Donald and Douglas will miss their turntable until it is mended. That evening, Oliver was hauled gently to safety. I'm sorry, sir, he said to Sir Topham Hatt. I should have listened to Duck's advice. I don't feel good gracious or whatever it is. I just feel silly. Well, Oliver, replied Sir Topham Hatt, now you know the damage cars can do. Yes, I do, sir. I, I look like a load of scrap iron. Oh, I don't think so, laughed Sir Topham Hatt. But you do need to go to the works to be mended. The other engines now felt sorry for Oliver. The branch line won't be the same without you, Whistle Duck. Come back soon. A few days later, Oliver did come back. His coat gleamed brighter than ever. He was a wiser engine, too, and never made a mistake about cars again.